la paz y no puede And there depends on uh, potassium coordinate wall fine. See you you're all familiar with potassium coordinate. Okay. So, uh, so the potassium in potassium, uh, you need to look it up. Uh, yes. If you forget the uh, in I think in the chapter quite uh, in the chapter two or chapter three there's uh uh, more complete discussion on linear coordinate and then there will be formula for all the different coordinate on the, the all the gradient and the passing and divergence of gradient for that. So if you look that up, that would be this is one little row, partial partial row. And then the phi second degree and then the Z. The Z is more straightforward, it's just like a potassium coordinate. Okay. Then now the, so you can assume a separable uh, form of psi. It's quite a fine solution, so it depends on rho, phi, and v. So again, you in most generally you, you want to sum over separable solutions and so uh, I think your textbook use P and it's a little bit unfortunate the uh, notation because we usually reserve P for the radio part for the speaker coordinate rather because that uh, later I will identify for speaker coordinate that uh, that's either the gender polynomial for uh, symmetrical symmetric things or uh, Associate the gender function both are using T as the symbol. But uh, for cylindrical coordinate, it turns out that uh, it's supposed to be a basal function or modified basal function. So, anyway, follow the textbook. So, P is a function of rho. And then there's, uh, I think it's uh, capital phi. Capital phi, that depends on phi. Capital Z, that depends on Z. So, suppose that again, you, you have some uh, notation to, in, to indicate you're summing over uh, a bunch of uh, separable solutions. But, uh, but the later on, you can just, the discussion, you can just concentrate on one term. And that goes through, and then you find all the terms that satisfy the you know, all separable solution that satisfy the equation, and then finally you add up as much as you can, and you know, hopefully you are using complete set of complete complete basis. And then you're pretty sure you get all the solution. Okay, but uh, uh, so uh, for now it's just uh, we can just consider one term to. Forget about the summation. Okay. It's just understand that later on you actually sum over a lot of these. Okay. And the idea is just plug that in. Right. So uh, because it's separable for this term, you only operate on P, the other terms will come out of the derivative. So you have phi, double z, divided by rho. And now all these become no, ordinary derivative, not partial derivative. Again, uh, this will only operate on capital sign. You have C, D, 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 D,
Uniform square. And this is P I or this it is no just P square Z P Z square. And then that one is just P I Z. Okay, so it's straightforward right up to here. Now the, the next step is uh, to divide the whole thing by by the function phi. Okay. And then of course <laughs> whenever you divide something you 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 might uh, correct you might consider the I mean you may worry about the situation that is going to go to zero because uh, you know, don't want to divide by zero. And as it turns out, it can sometimes uh, actually uh, divide by zero. If you choose like some of the uh, trigonometric function, and that you might think is problematic, but uh, you can can regard this discussion as suggestive. It's just get to the final form first. And then once you get the final form, because the process, although if the process involved dividing it, divide, divided by zero, but whatever the process is, you, you get some form of the solution. And the idea is you go back to the original equation, you actually satisfy it without using the division by, by the function itself. It's, it's still satisfied the, the equation. So that's the... Uh, so the, although you somewhere along the line you use a divide whole function, but that uh, tends to not affect the the, the the equation, the solution, uh, whether it's valid or not. It doesn't make it invalid or, or bring additional unphysical, unreal solution. So, okay, so uh, so divided by the whole thing is okay up, up to here. I mean, as long as finally the solution you check whether it satisfies the original equation, okay? So you divide it, and the idea is that uh, when you divide it, you're making some terms that de depends on one coordinate only, say like this one, you divide it by whole thing. This becomes a one over the rho of uh, P. Yeah. And this one is five. This one is one over z. z. Just a square. Okay, so. You are the whole thing, just uh, cancel some terms and then that is what is there. Is that okay? Right. All right. Now the argument is uh, uh, you need to go to uh, different steps. So this is the first term is the fun function of rho only. And the second term is the complication because it's a function of phi and then rho. Okay, so you need, need to do it a little later. And this is a function of z's only. And this is a function of, that's not a function. <laughs> Although uh, this, this is a constant at this stage, but uh, like, again, later on, you generalize that to some form of function. But anyway, uh, treat it like that. Uh, you can separate it into different steps. Uh, because if you group these two terms, the first two terms combined will be a function of rho and phi. And the third term, only a function of z, this is a constant. So, but they all add up to zero. So the first argument is that uh, this, the third term, because this function of z, in order that it add to the other term, which is constant or function of rho and phi and add to zero, this means that uh, this term must be a constant. So, uh, simple, you know, 
use the cat picture notation. This is called L square. I mean, it doesn't have to be positive. You put it L squared, it, 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 it make it positive. Uh, that's because last, last time in cadence recording, we also do that. Uh, we, yeah, like uh, in both, we have two dimension X and Y. Both have the same form, and one is positive, the other must be negative. So it can be positive or negative. And in synodial coordinate also, this term doesn't have to be positive. And the solution for that one, D squared Z, C, C squared over Z equals to L, L squared Z, meaning that that equals to L squared Z, right? And this solution, Last time we already talked about that one. Do you still remember what the solution is? No, this is not science. This is pass. This is L, L is for L square is positive. I said it can be L square or minus L square, but the textbook chooses it to be L square. Exponential function, yeah. Yeah. So you can either use that, let's see, whatever you want. Notation in the text. I think he's not using my my way of working, so it doesn't matter. So like, this is A E Z B B minus either that one or A cos but that's a L L Z cos L Z B sinh. Mm -hmm. right. Right. So that's uh that's the z part of the separable solution. And which one to use that uh, depends on which one is easier to use. Okay. So uh so that's so far so good. Now uh once you get that, then oh uh, Again, this can be negative L, and if it's negative L, then this will be cosine and sine. So yeah, we already talked about that last time. But anyway, uh, if this is L squared is a constant, K squared is a constant. So now uh, that is, uh, this is function of rho, this is a function of rho, rho, and phi. So uh, the idea is that you can get rid of this rho dependent by multiplying by rho squared throughout the whole equation. So that becomes a uh, right out explicitly. So now this becomes one of phi, phi squared, phi, phi squared. And this is a constant, L squared plus K squared. And we multiply by rho squared. That equals the same. Okay, now we get which of the rho squared in this middle term. Now this is just a function of phi. This is a function of rho. This is a function of rho. Because these are just constants. So these two terms are function of rho. This is a function of phi. So again, you use the same argument that this must be equal to the constant. So the rest of this if has that also equals the negative of that constant. Okay, so that is uh, what we'll do. And this term we can assign a negative constant here. I actually use the Common notation is m squared, okay, minus m squared. So the phi equation becomes m squared, capital phi d phi squared, equals to minus m squared, plus m. Okay, and now you know the, the solution, right? So that depends on what, yeah, still you can have uh, two choices. Phi can be, let's you know, you have all these A and B, so C. You can either, again, you put exponential function, it becomes I and phi. 
and or and then minus i and um, so either use exponential function with a compact argument or cosine of Oh, uh, uh, yeah, so this is just coming from the M where I assign it to minus M squared, so this is like that. But uh, that hasn't fixed M as an integer, but that will usually what we will choose M as an integer. And because the, for the usual application, we will require that the problem will, set, will be valid over the whole range of spine. So usually that, uh, that what we con consider, so choose a choose your coordinate system around the Z axis, you have this phi as a local angle and you include the solution around this angle for the whole range of phi. And in that case, uh, the solution is still the same, but then because you, you're going along two pi and phi going along an angle, Two pi, you require go back to the same solution. That's that. Uh, that's just physics. You, 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 this is just angle going to going back to the its own, the original position. The function should not change. Uh, okay, so that. Uh, so it, it's like a periodic boundary condition. So therefore, in order that uh, this function doesn't change, the m must be integer. And this, uh, you could include zero well, although the whenever you use a uh, sine and cosine you only use a uh, part of that so you don't use negative because they are linearly dependent right and um, and then the also this is uh you you like negative m then uh, one will change to the other, so that you don't have to use uh, uh, the negative sign, so you can just choose the positive part, so zero, one, and so on. Right. Or, or if you want to use that so you, in your solution, you would skip just one term instead of writing two terms. That uh, you go to M as all integer, and you, keep, you only need to keep one term. Okay. Uh, now, so for this one, obviously, uh, if an m equals zero, you only have this uh, the first term, which is just a constant. Okay, so that's the phi solution. All right, so the last step is the row equation. That is the most complicated part. So now to write it, um, uh, you can just, uh, it depends on how you write it, multiply p to the other side. Okay, so uh, let's just write it row d uh, d row. Now the rest are combined to uh, uh, this L square plus P square times row square. Minus m square multiplied by p that equals to c. So that that's the p equation. Let's see if uh, that's what the text is. Right. That's nine point six three. Um, what do your, your textbook define another way of over here? Define it n square. It doesn't have to be, but you know. Just the way it's right. Okay. Then now later on we'll identify uh, identify that uh, this equation as the Gaussian equation. What this piece of text talk about? Uh, I think you wait until then. Later chapter to talk about the question. Okay. Uh, and
Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Anyway, uh, we'll talk about basal basal function and basal equation later. So we we just leave it like that. Okay. So uh, I think your text is just y distribution as p uh, to the n n. So the solution will be p sub l. Um, so it depends on l and n. Obviously, you have k, but k is your parameter in in the equation originally. Okay. But the yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, so uh, the idea is that all these uh, should be uh, multiplied together. This one, this one, this one, because in origin, assume it uh, to be separable. They are just multiplied to get the solution phi. So. So this for this term is P L M. It's a function of rho, and then uh, phi is just if you use this uh just one term in and use all integer, use the other n phi, and then uh one z you have the uh, two two possibility LZ. not a cross cross L Z. B, C. Okay. So, so you need to be careful that uh, all these are related. So if you use the same M here, then you should use the same M in the exponential function. And then the same L here, you should use the same L in here. So you also you multiply together. So the coefficient supposedly also depends on your choice of L and M. Okay. Um, then the full solution will be summing all the possible L and M. Okay. And for M mode, we already fixed that if we're going around the both integral both integral or as a move angle, then M will be all integer. But L is unspecified for now. And, and whatever the specification of L depends on the boundary condition. Okay, but uh, that's the most general solution. Okay, now the, again, the, you can now, once you have the form, you can now put this back to the original equation. And then satisfy yourself that uh, this is indeed a, a solution. Right. Uh, yeah, this, uh, oh yeah, there's a, a K is a com the K is not explicit in here, but uh, K is uh, somewhere in very in the in the solution of P. Okay. And but you put this form back to the original equation, you be able to show that uh, it satisfied the uh, uh, original equation. And that's, that's what you know you didn't make an error in, in, in divided by zero. But sometimes it can be zero, like the, if you use a sign here, and you just, just Sign and cosine, and then you just keep this term, it can be zero. As long as it satisfies the equation, that doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did he talk about that? Uh, because we will go through a basal function chapter. So, uh, I think you're using the example. The example is the Laplace equation, I suppose. Right? Laplace equation, uh, is it Laplace or Poisson equation? There's a Poisson equation, and this is from the, Yeah, the the idea is that he doesn't have the doesn't have the m, so m would be uh, m would be zero here. 
So if you don't have M, then you only have this. Then square root square. And the equation 9.69 is just multiply this out. And that would be uh, the solution of that would be at any KSU function of all this zero. So you can, I mean, we, we can jump ahead a little bit and write use the form of the Bessel equation. Um, then uh, that would be, I think we start from chapter 14, we'll talk about Bessel equation. Okay. Yeah. Write it down the form of this equation. Yeah. Just a little subtlety that uh, you need to uh, be a little careful because uh, usually when you talk about this equation, it will, it will be in a dimensionless form, just like what you are doing here. So. Uh, this is 14.1. X squared. J mu. Upper point. Oh, the second unit. That's function of X only. Okay. Plus X. J mu prime. Plus X squared. Minus mu squared. J mu. That equals zero. Okay, so that's the, the form, and basically the Bayesian function j sub mu satisfies this equation. Okay, that's 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 the idea, and we will we'll talk about or later on you read the Bayesian Bayesian equation. How, why this j mu, or what what the property of the, or this j mu? Okay, and now you compare. What we want to do compared with this equation. So if you multiply this uh, derivative out explicitly, that becomes rho square, rho square, d, d rho square, plus um, just operate on that. And you just rho, d, p, d rho. And this is l square. Rho square minus L square. Okay, now you compare the two, you identify that uh, nu is your m, this is minus nu square, this is m, m square. Okay, and now the, the idea is uh, the first is uh, in Dimensionless form, so it's uh, x is a dimensionless variable, but you have n square here, n, n row. So, uh, so basically, uh, to put it in this form, the, you just need to rescale your, your coordinate or we define your coordinate. So, you define x as n times rho, this becomes uh, x square, right? Uh, this becomes, uh, because you are, just you can multiply n and divide it by n, this becomes x dp dx. And likewise, you multiply n squared divided by n squared, this becomes uh, x squared dp dx. Right, and then you have x squared minus n squared d p dp dx. Right. And then you see that this is exactly the same. Uh, the equations are exactly of the same form. Now uh, we can write them P is just J sub M. And depends on X, but X is just M. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the solution. Right, and uh, now it depends on what the uh, whether m is an integer or not. If m is uh, is not an integer, if, uh, which is uh, not this case, uh, if you 
include all the file must be integer. So that would be a basic function of, of uh, integer order. Okay, but if it's not an integer, then that is, uh, if you have a case that your boundary condition doesn't involve all as you move angles, like you cut your space into just one quarter of space, then this would be your boundary. Uh, the XZ plane and YZ plane is your boundary. Then you keep just a quarter of your smooth, smooth angle, then M doesn't have to be integer. That is a possible if you have that problem. Okay, and then uh, this would be J new. If M is not integer, then the solution is not just, then you will have two solutions and whatever you have for the CDE, you have J, M, and then plus J, M, J minus M, M. In that case, if M is not uh, an integer, they are linearly independent. M, J sub M, and J sub minus M, they are linearly independent, and that those are valid solution. And we'll talk about what, what is for later. But if uh, J is, but M is an integer, like you do all as you move angle, that becomes an integer. Then uh, this, these are uh, basic functions of integer order. And one property of that is J minus M in that case is linearly dependent on J. They, they are not just, they are actually just proportional to each other. So you cannot use this. And that is when well, this is true. And not. Okay. And if M is integer, then uh, then you introduce another function, another solution of the Bessel equation of the same M. Right, and that is uh, there are two notations. Some people use N, some people use I think I guess you actually you use Y. I don't know correctly. Yeah, so called Neumann function. Yeah, I can double check it. Chapter 14. I think chapter, section 2, we talked about it. Uh, section 3, uh, yeah. we talked about it. Yeah, we talked about it. Why? This is 14.3 section boundary function. So it's a Neumann function. And uh, that, uh, that would be. Another solution. Okay. And the, the idea is that um, the Neumann function is different from the Benson function in one uh, major major property is that they are singular at a uh, small row. It becomes a there's a singularity at row equals zero this Neumann function. So uh, so if you if your problem also includes the origin. Say this is your radio position. If uh, the problem actually involved, need if you need the solution around it, it goes, goes to zero, then you cannot use the Neumann function. Okay, so therefore you will get rid of this basically by the boundary condition that include and include the origin. You basically need to set f equals to in the extension. So you only have only have the only have a J function. Okay, so that, uh, that's another subtlety when you use a, use a basal equation as this solution. So there's a few things you need to consider whether the solution is with all a smooth angle. That, if that is true, then um, that M would be integer. If M is integer, you automatically set phi as a, as a trigonometric function. So M is a uh, is a uh, sine sine M phi or cosine M phi, and that correspondingly set the the order of the Bessel function. So the same M going to here. This is the the order of the Bessel the solution of the Bessel function. So uh, uh, that would be this case. You have a uh, general. You have the Bessel function and the Neumann function, right? But then uh, again, if you include the origin, then uh, then you cannot use it. Not uh, that is why 
non non pollution yeah. must set the coefficient to zero and sometimes you don't as you don't include the origin say, say suppose you have a cylinder and you want to consider the solution outside of the cylinder then you don't include the origin here and you need the non -non. Okay, it depends on boundary condition and the geometry of your problem. Okay.